Mark chapter 12, Holman Christian Standard Bible. Then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug out a pit for a wine press, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenant farmers and went away. At harvest time, he sent a slave to the farmers to collect some of the fruit from the vineyard from the farmers. But they took him, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent another slave to them, and they hit him on the head and treated him shamefully. He sent another, and they killed that one. He also sent many others, and they beat some and killed some. He had one to send, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenant farmers said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. Therefore, what will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the farmers and give the vineyard to others. Haven't you read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This came from the Lord and is wonderful in our eyes. Because they knew he would said this parable against them, they were looking for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd, so they left him and went away. Then they sent some Pharisees and Herodians to him to trap him by what he said. When they came, they said to him, Teacher, we know you are truthful and defer to no one, for you don't show partiality, but teach truthfully the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay? Or should we not pay? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me a Daenerys to look at. So they brought one. Whose image and inscription is this? He asked them. Caesar's, they said. Then Jesus told them, Give back to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And they were amazed at him. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him and questioned him. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaves his wife behind, and leaves no child, his brother should take the wife and produce offspring for his brother. There were seven brothers. The first took a wife, and dying, left no offspring. The second also took her, and he died, leaving no offspring. And the third likewise. So the seven left no offspring. Last of all, the woman died too. In the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife will she be? since the seven had married her. Jesus told them, Are you not deceived because you don't know scriptures or the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Now concerning the dead being raised, haven't you read in the book of Moses? In the passage about the burning bush, how God spoke to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly deceived. One of the scribes approached when he heard them debating and saw that Jesus answered them well. He asked him, Which command is the most important of all? 
This is the most important, Jesus said. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have correctly said that he is one, and there is no one else except him. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is far more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered intelligently, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God, and no one dared to question him any longer. So Jesus asked this question as he taught in the temple complex. How can the scribes say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself says by the Holy Spirit, The Lord declared to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can the Messiah be his son? And the large crowd was listening to him with delight. He also said in his teaching, Beware of the scribes who want to go around in long robes, who want greetings in the marketplaces, the front seats in the synagogues, and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses, they say long prayers just for show. These will receive harsher punishment. Sitting across from the temple treasury, he watched how the crowd dropped money into the treasury. Many rich people were putting in large sums, and a poor widow came and dropped in two tiny coins worth very little. Summoning his disciples, he said to them, I assure you, this poor widow has put in more than all those given to the temple treasury. For they all gave out of their surplus, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she possessed, all she had to live on. Please click like on this page. Click subscribe to my YouTube channel. Spread the word of God by clicking on share. May God bless you.